Hello and welcome aboard BD Travels in our Camino de Santiago. In our previous episode, we left the town of San Juan de Ortega. After walking for a few hours, we passed the town of Ajes. We walked through the UNESCO World Heritage Town of Atapuerca. We skipped the military zone just before reaching the town of Cardañuela, Rio Pico. We continue our walk through Orbaneja, Rio Pico, and continue our walk until reaching the town of Burgos. And just a few minutes later, we walked by the cathedral and arrived in our hostel. In today's episode, we will discover the historical richness of Burgos. We'll contemplate the Arco de Santa Maria. We'll stroll around the historical center and glance at a distance its wonderful museum. Share a few memories in its cathedral. Cathedral. Early in the morning, we will continue our journey towards Hornillos del Camino. On our way there, we meet another pilgrim, Ana from Spain. Early in the morning, we reach the town of Tardajos. There, we meet the rest of Ana's friends. A short walk and we are at Rave de las Calzadas. A mural on the road caught our attention. And a few minutes later, we stopped at a church with a very friendly nun. I walked under the blazing sun and took a short break just before reaching Hornillos del Camino. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and join us in our Camino de Santiago journey. Welcome aboard. Hello and welcome to the city of Burgos. This city is an important step on the pilgrimage way of St. James. Burgos is the birthplace of the Spanish hero El Cid, with a splendid Gothic-style cathedral and a castle that overlooks the entire city. The whole place has a timeless atmosphere. This is the Plaza Mayor and it is the most important meeting point in Burgos. Roughly shaped like a hexagon, it covers approximately 6,000 square meters. Plaza Mayor is defined by boutiques, bars, and restaurants. And close to there, we find one of our very favorite spots, this is one of our favorite places to get yogurt in Burgos. There are so many different choices to choose from, I didn't know which one to choose. Finally, I settled for chocolate yogurt with strawberries, pineapple, and sprinkles. The city of Burgos used to be surrounded by a 12th century wall, but today only some parts of the medieval barrier remain intact, including the triumphal Arco de Santa Maria, the most impressive of the dozen arch entries to the walled city. The interior of the building can also be visited it houses temporary art displays and an exhibition of antique pharmaceutical equipment. At night, the statues on the facade are backlit, making it look even more marvelous. We now turn our attention to Paseo del Espolón. It is one of Castile's most beautiful promenades. It borders the Arlazón River, and it encompasses intricate statues of former Spanish kings scattered throughout the avenue. From there, we walk through its narrow alleys all the way up to the castle, but before we make the stop in one of the churches. Inside the church, we contemplate its wonderful Gothic style. The Church of San Esteban was built over a former Romanesque style in the last third of the 13th century. There, Danalis took the opportunity to stand on the Platerus pulpit. We left the church and then climbed towards the castle. From there, we had great views of the city of Burgos. We left the castle and made our way down to the town. There, we contemplated the cathedral in Burgos. Our Lady of Burgos was begun in the 13th century at the same time as the great cathedrals of the Ile de France and was completed in the 15th and 16th century. The entire history of Gothic art is summed up in its superb architecture and its unique collection of works of art, including paintings, wire stalls, tombs, and stained glass windows. In 1919, the cathedral became the burial place of Rodrigo Diaz de Vivar, El Cid, and his wife, Doña Jimena. Above them rises a remarkable Renaissance lantern vaulting, which Philip II allegedly praise as more a work of angels than of men. The cathedral offers free entries every Tuesdays from 4.30 to 6. Make sure you arrive early since the lines are very long. We leave the cathedral and after a few meters, we walk to the hostel to spend the night. Good morning, pilgrims on day 16. And uh, now we're leaving the, the town of Burgos around 8.30 in the morning. It's completely uh, empty right now. And uh, we're just gonna walk next to the cathedral starting this day. One more day in the Camino de Santiago. It's going to be rainy, and uh, hopefully we'll get, uh, you know, dry, uh, dry stuff. So stay with us. BD Travels. Upon reaching the exit of Burgos, we noticed that it was 849 and 20 degrees Celsius, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, folks, a quick tip. If you're uh, staying next to the cathedral and you need to uh, come across the path again, the easiest way to do it, instead of going through the town and all the hassles, what you do is you walk towards the uh, the Santa Maria Arch, which is the one right in front of the church, and then find the river and stay on the uh, on the side of the river so that the le the river is going to be on your left until you get to this point. There's a bridge, and uh, you connect to the bridge. It's a lot easier. You don't have to go through the town and zigzag your way through. Well, folks, after many miles, I've just came across one of the pilgrims. Uh, now we're walking together. Apparently, uh, I'm trying to make it to Montana. She's trying to make it to a town right before it. So I'm here with uh, 
Anna, hi. Where are you from, Anna? I'm from Granada, in the south of Spain. The south in Andalusia? Yeah. Oh, okay. And why are you making the Camino? Why are you walking the Camino? Oh, because I love the Camino. I tried this way four years ago, and I completely fell in love with Camino, so the Camino I repeat called every you. year. Yeah. I think that's what happens to all of us, Camino calls <laughs> us. And uh, you're heading today to? Uh, Hornillos, Ontanas, I don't know. Maybe that's... 20, 30 kilometers. Oh, that's why. Well, that's what we do, you know, we walk a lot. Uh, you gotta be in shape, a little bit of shape, uh, but this is why we keep on. Keep on trying with us, BDE Travels. Well, folks, after two and a quarter hours, we made it to the next town, Tardajos. And the word of the day is mosquitoes. Everywhere we walk, there's mosquitoes. Uh, I don't know, it was raining last night, so probably they just came out because of that. But man, there's a, there's a storm of mosquitoes and uh, starting to get warm, but we cover almost 11 kilometers in two hours. So we're doing a very good pace. Ana is keeping me up. I just broke my record. It was only four kilometers per day. Now we're doing five. I guess being a flamenco dancer like her helps out with your physical condition. So we're just fighting the mosquitoes here, continuing BD travels. Well, folks, once again, we reached the town of Tarlajos and over here we were walking with Ana and Ana just met with her group. So we have uh, uh, Eva, we have L Lorraine? Lorena. Lorena and Iñaki. Iñaki, so they're all from Spain. I'm the only one from the U.S. Uh, we're looking for the uh, the arrows and we have someone who works in journalism. Uh, I think she works at a radio station, so she's not going to mind if we interview her. We have Eva. Eva, why are you doing the Camino? This year, because of the coronavirus, of course, <laughs> I started to walk the Camino five years ago. Uh -huh. and. Uh, it belongs to my life from then. <laughs> okay. And I try to come back uh, every year. It depends just for a few days or for a long walk. <laughs> okay. For a month, it depends on the year, but it's a part of very important of my life from, Good. from then. <laughs> ah, bueno. We got over here, once again, Loren Lorena. Lorena, no, Lorena. No, eh, Ana, Ana, no te me pongas en medio. Lorena, I got Lorena here. Hold on, let me, let me, let me. Lorena. Español, por favor. Solamente en español. So Lorena's going to do it in Spanish. So I'll put the, the subtitles uh, down here. So why are you doing the Camino? ¿Por qué estás haciendo el Camino? Bueno, pues porque con aquella conocer la zona y me gusta, pues bueno, me gustan mucho las iglesias y las voy capturando en fotos y voy viendo cada La arquitectura, le gusta la arquitectura. Sí, sí, exactamente. Y es prácticamente eso, una experiencia más. ¿Aspecto cultural también? Aspecto cultural, sí. Ah, bueno. Y, y viendo, ampliando puntos de vista y... Haciendo y gente. Conociendo gente. <laughs> Then we have Iñaki. Why are you doing the Camino Iñaki? Why? I wanted to do it uh, too long ago, two years, too many years. Me pongo hasta nervioso. <laughs> se no, se no lo luego, ¿eh? <laughs> My father did it twice and I wanted to start it. Did he do the Camino Frances also? Frances, the North one, okay. everything. And the English one as well. And you, you've done it so far? No, no, not me. Oh, you're gonna, this oh, is my first time, first time. Camino. Okay. And this year, everything is okay to do it because I had have, I have holidays, enough holidays to be 15 days walking, okay. more or less. COVID also, I thought it was a good opportunity to do it because it's gonna be less people in, in the Camino. Camino. It's gonna be and that's it. That's it. I wanted to know new people. After talking with Iñaki, we visited the Church of Santa Maria de la Asunción. The old church was replaced by this Gothic temple in the 13th century. Furthermore, within its walls, you'll find a lot of Renaissance and Baroque styles within the 16th and 18th century. We got our stamp, left the church, and continued on our way to the Camino.
the folks leaving the town of Tarlajos, just a few uh, meters away, roughly like 10 or 15 minutes. It's the next town, Rabe de las Calzadas, and uh, then we continue up to the next town. I can see something not far in the distance, but uh, we're gonna keep on walking. Right now I'm with the team. They're a lot younger than I am, so they're, <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with their pace. But nevertheless, we keep on traveling here with BDE Travels. This octagonal fountain in the middle of Rabe de las Calzadas is an emblematic icon of this town. It is perfectly situated so that pilgrims stuck up on water before tackling the next eight kilometers to Hormillos del Camino. I have to wear the mask to get inside the, uh, the store. And uh, the group from Spain that I was walking with, well, you know, they're a lot younger than I am, so they left me behind. I just, you know, wish them a buen camino. And that's how it is. You meet people and all of a sudden you don't see them again. You might see them again in the Camino, but you enjoyed every minute of it. So continue with us here on BDE Travels. This is La Iglesia de Santa Maria and Rabe de las Calzadas. In the year 1877, a previous facade was destroyed. The church that we see today began its construction in the same year. Reaching the end of the town, this mural caught our attention. Just a few yards away, we come across the Ermita de Nuestra Señora de Monasterio. Teresa, the nun we see here, waits for all pilgrims and stamps their credentials. The church was built at the end of the 18th century, and it's right in the middle of the Camino. Well, folks, we reached uh, one of the uh, churches in the middle of the Camino, and I just met a beautiful lady. Uh, she made my day, uh, actually. She's, her name is Teresa. She's one of the sisters of Mary here. Uh, she's in charge of this small church and uh, it's been an inspiration because of the things she's spoken very briefly but very deep so i suggest that when you come around in this town stop take a chance and if you get to meet her talk to her you'll you'll learn a lot from her Well, folks, leaving the town of Rabe de las Calzadas, there is like a uh, small place. It has a like a barbecue place. I think it's about the only place in between Rabe de las Calzadas and the next town where you can actually take a small break. Uh, there's shade in here, so I'm taking a break right now. It's a little bit uh, close to 1 p.m. and the sun is starting to beat me up. So uh, I'm taking a break. Next uh, town's approximately about six kilometers and we'll see how I feel and maybe I'll continue to the next town over. Uh, but for now, today's gonna be a 20 kilometer uh, hike. If I can make it a 25, I'll make it a 25, but you'll know. I want to see the video how many miles I walked today so uh, stay with us we are enjoying the Camino de Santiago here on BDE Travels. Well, folks, uh, I'm taking another short break uh, right before Hornillos del Camino. There's a steep descent uh, right before you get to town. So if you're on a bike, you're, you'll enjoy it very much. If you're on foot, it might be a little bit slippery. So I recommend you using your trekking poles. Uh, right now, Hornillos del Camino is about 20, close to 21 kilometers from Burgos. And I think that's going to be it for me today. Uh, my feet are hurting a lot, especially the foot that was broken. And uh, I don't want to get any blisters, so I don't want to push it. I could not find any albergues or hotels in Hornillos del Camino for the five of us. So I have to get into 
town, get a taxi back to Burgos, and then tomorrow morning I have to come with the girls and then start our Camino from Hornillos del Camino all the way to Castro Jeriz. If there is any uh, rooms or albergues, Spanish pilgrims, and uh, many of the albergues have closed and the other ones have reduced their beds because of the virus. There are not that many uh, rooms right now. Usually an albergue will have half of its capacity now to uh, pandemic so that's why it's so hard to find an albergue or, uh, or any room for for that matter so uh, we're gonna go to Hornillos del Camino I'm gonna find a way to get a taxi or if there's a bus to get back to Burgos spend the uh, evening with the girls and my wife there and then tomorrow morning we'll pick up right where we left off and we're gonna continue here on the Camino with BD Travel. In our next episode, we leave the town of Burgos to catch a taxi to Hornillos del Camino. We began our walk in the Meseta very early in the morning. Great news, only 477 kilometers to go. And after many kilometers, we've reached the town of Ontanas. Danalisa and I climb the bell tower at the church in Ontanas, and we get ready to taste the water. A few hours later, we reach the ruins of San Anton, and finally we contemplated the distance, the castle of Castro Jeriz. We found very strange things on this town. We explore its surroundings and call it a day. Join us in our next episode as we continue our journey in the Camino de Santiago here with BDE Travels. Oh, and right, um, don't forget to follow BDE Travels on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all this stuff. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.